you missed our Sunday service, then this is where you want to be. Enjoy the worship and the word as Pastor Danny brings it. I love you, Lord. Know your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. begin to uh, speak early to me last week, and uh, I felt like God gave me this word. I don't know who all will be hearing or be listening, but I want you to say these words with me. Never, never, never give up. Say that with me. Never, never, never 
give up. Paul was writing to the Galatians, and he says these words, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap, if what? If we faint not. Father, I thank you for this word, and I thank you for those that are watching online and those that may even watch it a little bit later through the week. But, Lord, we thank you, Father, that you are faithful. Lord, what a powerful song this morning. You are faithful. Lord, we choose to bless you. We choose to praise you. We choose to thank you, Father, in spite of all the hiccups and the setbacks and the difficulties. In the storms, we still choose to bless you and thank you. And, Father, I give you honor, I give you glory, I give you praise, I give you thanks for those right now that are with us, Lord, as we share this word. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. How many of you likes Chick-fil-A? Anybody like Chick-fil-A? I love Chick-fil-A, and one of the reasons I love it is that uh, they're not open on Sunday. Here is Truett Cathy started his Chick-fil-A business many, many years ago, and he started his very first restaurant, and it was called the Dwarf. It's done anything but Dwarf. It was called the Dwarf Diner. But he started his first Chick-fil-A, and literally within three weeks of building his very first restaurant, Chick-fil-A, in three weeks, it burned down to the ground. Can you imagine the enthusiasm and the excitement in building this team? And three weeks later, it all goes up in ashes. But see, the dream was deep in his heart, and he chose not to give up. Then a little bit time later, this story literally takes me back to some disappointments. I mean, he knows what it is to have some disappointments and setbacks. And so I remember that reading his story that a little time after that, his brothers, they were his partners in the business. But one day he got a phone call on the news. All three of his brothers were killed in a plane, airplane crash. I can't imagine the devastation, the blow that Truett Cathy went through. Some of you right now, you know what it is to face discouragement. You know what it is to face disappointment. You know what it is to face some setbacks in your life. Today, I want to talk to you about never, never, never give up. Brother Jim, if you don't mind, close those doors for me. That'll help me a little bit. And when I read his story and I, I thought about some of my own personal struggles that, that I've been through in my own personal life, I was going through one of the most devastating blows. It's, it's probably been close to 17, 20 years ago. And I'll never forget as I was in the sanctuary and I was praying and I was seeking the Lord and I was asking God, Lord, I don't know that I can press on through this. How am I going to take the next step? And I'll never forget a word that God dropped into my heart, and he's brought this same word back to me several times. And here's what, it's, here's what God said to me. Danny, it's better to wrestle with your struggle than to wrestle with the regret that you quit. Have you ever thought about quitting? Have you ever thought about, Lord, this storm, this difficulty, this crisis? I don't know that I can get through this. Let me tell you the reason some think about quitting. Sometimes it's because of the storm and the setback. Maybe it's in their marriage. 
Maybe it's with their job. Maybe it's with their health. There have been times you get a doctor's report, and Roger, I've thought about him so many times when the doctor said to Roger, you got six months to live. But Roger can boldly declare that was ten and a half years ago, and he's still here. How many of you know it's not over till God says so? Come on, do you believe that? Until God says so. Some have thought about quitting because of the delays in life. How many of you love delays? You go to the dentist, and there's a delay. You go to the airport, and there's a delay. You go, and you're, and, and you're looking for a spouse, and there's a delay. You said, Lord, I, I, I'm looking for that person that, you want me to live with the rest of my life. But seemingly, God, are, are, are you on vacation? Lord, have you forgotten? Are you even hearing to my, are you hearing my prayer? Friend, delays does not mean denial. Say that with me. Delays does not mean denial. How many of you believe God's timing's always right? Now, I haven't always thought God's timing was all right. Sometimes I thought God was a little bit late. How many of you know Mary and Martha, they got just a little bit upset with Jesus, and they were so bold to say when Jesus came four days later, if you'd have been here, in other words, if you'd have been where you were supposed to be, this would have never happened. Has anybody ever gotten that angry with God? Possibly. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection Come on, say it with me. I am the resurrection and the life. Yeah, we know that Jesus spoke and Lazarus came forth and he started walking. Can you imagine what people were seeing and thinking of the miraculous that God? How many of you know sometimes delay is all about his glory? It's all about not what we want, but it's what he wants and what he has designed. He says to everything there's a season. Sometimes people quit because of the question marks in life. Anybody ever had some question marks? Friend, when you don't understand something and you put a big question mark, you need, to, you need to daily thank God that he's Jehovah Jireh, your provider. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's our victory. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's our peace. So while you're tossing and you're turning in the night, may I encourage you, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he changes not. Don't put a question mark, friend, when God sometimes is just putting a comma. Don't get upset with God's commas in your life because his timing is always right. Say that with me. His timing is always right. It's right on. And then sometimes we think about quitting because of mistakes. Have you made some mistakes? All the honest people lift both your hands right now. We've all made some mistakes. But I saw a beautiful sunrise this morning. And I, I thought, Lord, your mercies, they're fresh and they're new each and every morning. I want you to get a hold of what I'm going to say to you right now. Did you realize that when he called you and he handpicked you, do you realize he knew all about the mistakes you were going to make in your life? Hello? Noah, oh, he was a great man of God, but Noah got drunk. Go ahead. It's in the Bible. But God still handpicked him and told him to build an ark. And in the ark, you're going to bring your family. And you're, I'm going to wipe the world out, but I've handpicked you for this assignment. Hello? Noah got drunk. Abraham got impatient. Abraham got tired of waiting on God, and when Sarah said, why don't you take Hagar, and she'll give you a son, Abraham said, sounds like a good idea to me, and then they had Hagar, but how many of you know getting impatient with God is not his plan? 
we just read it. Don't get weary in well-doing, for in due season. If you wait on your due season, God's up to something. He's got something in mind. And then I thought about Moses. Moses, God handpicked him to pull the children of Israel out of Egypt, but he murdered a man before God started the great exodus. He was 40 years on the backside of a desert, but God knew exactly where he was. I thought about David. David committed murder. David committed adultery, but God handpicked him to be the king of Israel. I thought about Jonah. Jonah ran away from God, but God didn't, didn't give up on Jonah in spite of his own stubbornness. Somebody has ever been stubborn about something that you wanted, but God still loves you. God still knows where you are. I thought about Peter who denied the Lord. And yes, when he denied the Lord, Jesus still handpicked him for an assignment, knowing, is he not omniscient, which means he's all-knowing? When he saved you, when he called you out of darkness, and then I thought about even Judas. Well, Lord, why in the world would you pick Judas? Do you know Judas, even though he betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, it's what catapulted Jesus into his destiny. Friends, sometimes the betrayal that comes against you, some of you felt like quitting because somebody betrayed you. Come on, has anybody ever betrayed you? Let me see your hand real, real high. Look, look across. You're not alone. We've all been betrayed by somebody, but God can even use a betrayal in your life so that God can catapult you over into your destiny. Had Judas not betrayed the Lord, yes, he betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver, but it was still in the Father's plan. He knew one day you was going to go through some stuff, but I want to tell you what, there's never been anything, friend, that Jesus he knows what you're going through. He knows your pain. He knows your sorrow. He knows your agony. I thought about not only Peter and Jesus, I thought about Thomas. We, we, we talk about Thomas, the great doubter. He actually said when they, when, when they knew Jesus had risen from the dead and they began to tell Thomas about it, what did Thomas say? He said, unless I see the nail prints in his hand, I will not believe even Thomas and all the disciples fled during his crucifixion. But how many of you know, regardless of the doubts in his heart, Thomas was one of those great men of God. By the way, in India, there's many churches that are known because of Thomas and his being giving to the Lord and giving his life. I thought about Paul who persecuted the early church. God handpicked all of these in spite of the mistakes. Everybody say the mistakes. Even when you and I make mistakes. You see, we all have the natural tendency, the propensity, yes, to give in to the pressures, to give up, to say, you know, I think I'm finished, I'm through. Look with me in Romans 12, 1 through 3. Romans 12, 1 through 3, a powerful scripture that the Apostle Paul is using. And he says here, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. In other words, use your good sense. Another, use your discernment. Think wisely. According as God hath dealt, here's what I want you to hear, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Did you know he's given you faith? He's put a measure of faith on the inside of your heart. And if I can encourage somebody here today, when you're going through these tough places in life like Truett Cathy did, don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on your hope. Don't give up on your courage. Don't give up on being persistent. You've got to fight back. How many of you know that God's put a little fight on the inside of you? God calls a born-again believer of God with a fighting back spirit that says, I know. No, 
know that my God is for me and whatever the devil uses against me, God can turn it around. He said, no weapon formed against you. Go ahead and bless him. No, no weapon, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I want to encourage you, don't you dare lose that fight. Yeah, but pastor, I've been knocked down. Well, get up. Turn to your neighbor and say, get up. We've all been knocked down. But you got to get up. And you got to let your faith, you got to let your faith be charged every day, just like some batteries that will go dead on you. And you got to recharge those rechargeable batteries. I'm telling you, he can recharge your faith, and he can recharge your courage, and he can recharge your anointing, and he can recharge your dream, and he can recharge your vision, and he can recharge you to get up and keep going, keep pressing. Say, devil, get behind me. I know God is for me today. Let me tell you what, the devil will put all kind of negativity into your brain and in your mind. And I'm working on a series of God I know is talking to me about emptying out the negativity that tries to get in your mind and your thought life. He says, think on things that are true, that are honest, that are just, that are pure, that are lovely. You've got to fill your mind with the goodness of God. That's why I love that song this morning. Oh, I want to bless him. I want to praise him. Not because what I see naturally, but what I see in the spirit and what I see God will do in my future if I will keep pressing you and I what are we doing with the faith with the measure of the faith that he's dropped into our hearts did not the Lord tell us to add to your faith you know author's a great farmer over here him and Norma and they could probably teach us something about our faith because they know that when they plant corn when they plant peas when they plant tomatoes they can't just go out there and ignore it. What do they do? They water it. They fertilize it. I'm sure they got to pull some weeds. And they got to take care of it. That's the same way with my faith. I have to water it. I have to grow it. That's why Peter said, add to your faith, virtue and to virtue, knowledge and the knowledge, temperance and to temperance, patience and to patience, godliness and the godliness. He goes on and on and on, seven different things that I have to do because we all had the propensity to quit, to give up, to lay down, to throw in the towel. But Paul says, I, I, God's given everybody a measure of faith. What are you doing with your faith? When you leave here today, what will you do with your faith? When the challenges come, when you get the wind knocked out of you. For a few moments, I want to talk about a man named Elijah because Elijah was a great man of God. When I think of Elijah, I think of a man that God used him in some powerful ways. Sixteen different miracles. Elijah was a man that was anointed to go to the king and tell the king, a drought is coming because Israel has turned their back on God. Three and a half years, no rain. But during that drought, God led him to the brook of Cherith, and there at the brook of Cherith, gave him water. There at the brook of Cherith, a raven, a dirty bird, brought him bread and meat every day. That's a good lesson that I need his fresh bread in my life. I need the fresh water every day in my life. What do you do when the brook dries up? Do you quit? He didn't. God said, okay, transition is coming. I don't even know God's big enough to get you through every transition. Don't forget, God's the God that can help you with every transition. Whether it's a transition in your job, whether it's a transition with your children. How many of you remember when the kids all left home? I mean, just thankful. Finally, they're gone. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. 
I remember when all three of my kids, they left and they were gone. And it's called emptying the nest. I'll be honest, I really didn't like it. But God helps us through every transition. Thought about Boone this morning. That's my son. Today's his birthday. I said, Daniel, milk it for everything you can, just like your dad. You better believe when it's my birthday. Let's see, baby, I want a chocolate pie. And baby, I want, you know, just milk it. Today, I want to encourage somebody that even though Elijah was this great man of God, he went to Zarephath, and there is Zarephath. He uses a widow to take care of him during that season. He resurrects a boy that died. God uses this man continually over and over and over. But it's interesting to me that even great people of God still come to a place in their life, they get disheartened and discouraged. I wish I could tell you, yeah, just because you're called of God and you've got an anointing on God, you say, well, I can't sing like Brother John. Let me tell you what, it doesn't matter who you are in the kingdom of God. The enemy does not like you being a light. He does not like the joy of the Lord in your life. He doesn't like the purpose that God has for you. He does not enjoy that God has given you an assignment and that he is using you to build up the kingdom of God. And the Bible tells us that this great man of God, Elijah, he goes to the king now and he challenges all of Jezebel's prophets. Here's what God says. He tells them, Let's meet up on Mount Carmel. And there on Mount Carmel, the Bible says that we're going to have a showdown and we're going to see who God really is. We're going to see if your God is any bigger than our God. But when it's all said and done, how many of you know God showed himself strong? And when Elijah stood up to that altar and he began to pray, the Bible says that the God that answers by faith, Fire. He's the real, true God. And when Baal prayed all day and all night, and Elijah, he's making fun of these prophets of Baal. Hey, maybe he's out on a cruise line. Maybe he's on vacation. Wonder where your God is. And he just was being facetious all day long. But then he told him, back up. Let me show you who the God that I serve is. Let me show you today that the God that I pray to, he will bring fire down. He will consume the sacrifice. He'll lick up all the water and the stones and the wood. And the Bible says when he started praying, Lord, now I've done all these things at your command. And God, I pray now you will let your fire fall out of heaven and Lord consume the sacrifice. And many of you know the fire did fall. And when the fire fell, you better believe they all hit the deck and they know, whoa, we've never seen a God like this. Can you imagine the fear and the blood probably drained out of their face and they became weak? But the Bible says not only did the fire lick up and burn all the sacrifice, the Bible says they took out and killed all the prophets of Baal. Friend, God is greater than any force out of hell that's trying to discourage you, that's trying to disappoint you, that's trying to say, you won't make it now. You ever heard that before? The Bible says he won a great victory. Now, here's where it gets real, real interesting. Because the Bible tells us in 1 Kings 19, the Bible says that when Jezebel heard of all that Elijah had done to her prophets, let's read it, then Jezebel sends a fed express to Elijah. And here it goes. Jezebel was told everything that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, May the gods punish me and do severely if I don't make your life like the life of one of them by this 
It probably says, by this time, tomorrow, and then Elijah became afraid and immediately ran. Everybody say it. He immediately ran for his life. Don't lift your hand, man, but how many has ever been scared of a woman? Now, Doug, you didn't have to confess that. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Then Elijah became afraid and immediately ran for his life. And when he came to Beersheba, everybody say Beersheba. I looked it up on the map. Beersheba was a long, or I say long, hold it out, long ways from Mount Carmel. It would take him 40 days heading to the wilderness. Claudio, I learned that Beersheba had seven wells. I think there was a reason that he headed that far because he wanted to make sure he was out of the reach of Jezebel. But I got to thinking that possibly these seven wells, matter of fact, these were the same wells that the Philistines had thrown stones into Abraham and Isaac's wells. I got a good feeling, John, that very possibly he was thinking, you know, I, I might have to hide out for a while, and I sure don't want to run out of water. Yes, Isaac had to dig out those rocks out of the wells because the Philistines had stopped up the wells of Abraham and Isaac's wells. I mean, you know, sometimes the enemy throws stones in your well. Have you ever had to dig out the stones out of your own well? Because sometimes those stones hurt. There are times in my life that I've been hit, and I thought, Lord, are we going to make it? I was reading through my devotions this past week, and one of the scriptures that came out that the, really jumped off the page was how during the days of tribulation, the Antichrist will wear out the saints. Paul, I think he's getting a head start. I think the enemy is working right now over time to wear down the saints. Is anybody getting a little tired of the pandemic? Come on, let me see a hand. A anybody getting a little aggravated with all this masking? And you, you know, I'm not trying to stir up some wrong emotions here, but I, I, I believe the enemy is working overtime to wear us down because he wants to steal the fight on the inside of us. He wants us to get weary in the tough season that we are in. He wants us to get weary to the point that it, that it crushes our faith, that he tears down the dreams and things he wants. But I, but I was looking at 2 Peter, and I love this 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but God... Here's that song again. But God's faithful. He's not willing that anybody should perish. Whether you know it or not, I still believe I'm looking for the good. The devil, everything he does for evil, God can turn it around and something good can come out of what we're going through right now. All the stuff that you've been through, all the stuff that you have worked through, he said, when, not if, you walk through the waters. I'll be with you, and through the rivers, they'll not overflow you. And even when you're in the fire, you're not going to be burned. How many of you are glad he's the fourth man that will get in the fire with you? Friend, you're watching today, but God's with you in the fire that you're in today because he's a God that says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm going to walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. Fear no evil, for I am with thee, my rod, my staff, they comfort you. Oh, I love that song y'all were singing today, John. 
He will walk with us, friend. No matter how tough, no matter how difficult, don't grow weary. I love it. Even though Satan wants us to give up on what God has spoken to you and I, in Philippians 1, 6, one of my favorites, be confident. Say that with me. Be confident of this very thing. He which hath begun a good work in you, he shall perform it. Say it with me. He shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So what happened to Elijah? Elijah ran. Forty days. I'm running. I mean, has there felt like running? Sure you have. Where are you going to go? I-10 is going to run out into L.A., into the ocean. We going to keep a ship to China. It's not the location that's the problem. It's we allow the enemy to drown our faith with the doubt, with our discouragement, with our disappointment. What in the world is Elijah doing? Where did this great power and anointing and faith and courage, where did it go? I want to wrap it up with this today. How many of you know you can't outrun God? I want to encourage you today. God's big enough to finish what he started. In these latter days, as Satan will try his best to wear down the saints, I still believe breakthroughs are coming. I still believe miracles are coming. I still believe that he's greater than all the setbacks. Friend, God can bring a comeback regardless of what the devil has lied to you. Don't you ever give up on your marriage. Don't you ever give up on your dream. Don't ever give up on your son. And don't give up on your daughter. And don't give up on your spouse. And don't give up on your neighbor. How many of you, your neighbor needs to... He needs salvation. Come on, just be honest. You know they need salvation. Don't give up on them. I had a neighbor years, years, years ago down in Alturas while I was going through college, and I just got to be straight with you. Eric liked to drove me nuts. We were his Publix. Whatever he was out of. Hey, Danny. You got any toilet paper? I just ran out. We weren't in a pandemic then. Hey, Danny, we ran out of soup. You got some cans? You know, this went on for three years, and I was about ready to slam the door when I saw him coming. We had moved into a new neighborhood paying $169 a month for our house, which was still a miracle in that day, our first new home. But Eric, there was no restrictions back then. Eric would pull his old jalopy in the front yard and put it on four blocks and lift the engine out. I mean, in a year's time, I saw that house go from five stars to a half a star. No, I know y'all don't get upset about those things, but anyway... I kept my mouth shut, and I, I mean, I was ready to unload on him one day. I remember just the Lord dealt with me to pray for him. I started praying for Eric, and all those times I just, you know, I really wanted to knock him out. But I remember one night he came over to the house crying. I said, are you okay, Eric? He said, I just had to come and tell you. That little Baptist church tonight, I got saved, and I gave Jesus my heart and my life. Friend, you don't know who's in your shadow that's watching you. And I could have blown it real quick. 
and let him have it. You know, we forget sinners lie. We forget sinners cheat. We forget sinners steal. We forget we were all, we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. But whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. I watch God start cleaning him up. I watch God. I, I, I actually was no longer on his publics list. I, I, God really saved the dude. Here's Elijah. And I love this because he couldn't outrun God. You know what it said? God showed up. It's all there in the book. God showed up, and he looked at him and said, Elijah, what are you doing here? And then he starts complaining, starts whining, starts telling, I'm the only one left, God. By the way, when you get in that season, your perspective goes blind. In other words, you start thinking things that really aren't true. The Bible says that God spoke to him and said, Elijah, I got 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee down to Baal. In other words, you are not alone and you are not left. But he says, get up. Everybody say those words. Get up. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you need to hear this word. Don't you lie there in your self-pity. Don't you lie there in your discouragement and your despondent. But you need to get up because the same God that saved you, he said, I know you're going to go through the ups and the downs. He says, I know you're going to go through some tough places. I know there's going to be some disappointments, but I always try to live a life that I'm looking for the good. I'm looking for the gold, and I'm looking for the glory. I believe he can still turn all things together for the good. I still believe he'll never waste anything that I go through. I still believe God's going to have the final say over Danny Baggett's life, and if you'll choose to look up like I preached last Sunday, if you'll look up and you'll get up, come on, everybody say, you got to look up to get up, and if you'll get up, the same spirit that got him up out of the grave is that same Holy Spirit of God that got Elijah up. And he said, now here's what you're going to do. You go back and you finish your assignment. I'm not finished with you. I'm not through with you. Go back and anoint the king of Syria. I got a purpose for his life. And then I want you to go and anoint the king of Israel because I got a plan there too. And by the way, there's a third thing you're going to do. And there's a young prophet named Elisha and go and anoint that young prophet because I'm going to use him. How many of you believe regardless of what hell he's got your world in a spin and maybe your, your life's in a spin right now but in the name of Jesus get up because God's not finished with you yet. Millions of people have eaten Chick-fil-A ever since his first restaurant was burned to the ground. Millions of people have been fed because after his three brothers were killed in an airplane accident, millions of kids. Now, hear this. I didn't even know this. Truett Cathy has a scholarship. And for all you young people, you probably ought to perk up and hear this right now. Every time you go to a Chick-fil-A, those young people that come out and serve you, they are sharp. They are on, I mean, they are on it. But one of the reasons they're on it, because Truett Cathy set up a fund for scholarships for those young people to go to college. And up to this day, over $35 million have been given to those kids for a scholarship. Matter of fact, I know one that just made application last week trying to get a scholarship. Let me tell you what, friend. It does matter 
what you do with your own discouragement. It does matter that you encourage yourself in the Lord because somebody's watching you. Somebody's observing your faith. Somebody's observing your tenacity. And I want to encourage you that are listening. And I want to encourage you that are here. No matter how bad things get, don't you ever give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. But you get up in the name of Jesus because God, he's for you. Come on, if you believe it right now, go ahead and bless the Lord. Go ahead and give him a shout of praise. Go ahead and thank God that he is for you today. Would you stand to your feet right now? Oh, I'm so glad he's for me. What did Elijah do? He did. He got up. He came out of the cave. And what did he do? He went in the north of the king. Assyria, the king of Israel, and he anointed that young Elisha. And by the way, the Lord took Elijah out in a whirlwind. God caught him up. No matter if you want God to give you fresh oil today over your life, I don't believe it's over. I don't believe it's finished. I want you just for a moment, lift your hands as a sign of faith, as a sign and a declaration. God, I'm not going to give up. God, I'm not going to quit. God, I'm not going to throw in the towel. But God, I believe you are faithful. Thank you for watching our Sunday service. If you'd like to watch us live on Sundays, go to our Facebook page, Church of Hope, and like our page to stay in the know of what's happening.